from the Council. I call Eugenie Sage. I rise to speak on um, the Canterbury Earthquake Review Authority at pages 47 to 52 of the combined reports of select committees. CERA, as the previous member has alluded, was established in March 2011. It had extensive powers under one of the most draconian pieces of legislation this House has passed since World War II. And its task is to plan and coordinate Christchurch's recovery until 2016. And I certainly acknowledge the considerable work that it's done in carrying out land and building assessments as a basis of, for rebuilding and insurance decisions, and its work with the Christchurch City Council, Orion and others in coordinating the rebuilding of water, sewerage, electricity and other infrastructure. But I want to concentrate on Sarah's role in overseeing demolitions, which is specifically referred to on page 50 of the Combined Select Committee's report. In the last year, CERA has decided that more than 1,200 buildings should be demolished in Christchurch's central city, with 900 of these in the cordoned off CBD area. This is roughly half the buildings in Christchurch's commercial and cultural heart. They include more than 140 heritage buildings, which are recognised in the Christchurch City Plan, and more than 70 buildings which are listed and registered with the Historic Places Trust and hundreds of buildings which have contributed to the city's character, even if they aren't formally recognised as heritage buildings. And yet, because the public has had such limited access to the red zone, with only a few bus tours, very few people know how much is gone and how little is going to be left. So in its haste to demolish, CERA has failed to heed international best practice and international experience. Dr. Kit Miyamoto of Miyamoto International, which has helped and advised a number of cities recover from more than 100 natural disaster events, from hurricanes to earthquakes, warned that Christchurch was headed down completely the wrong track with Sarah's strategy of demolishing half of the central city. He recommended a takedown rate, or said it was more appropriate to have a takedown rate, of between 10 and 20 per cent of buildings. And he said that many of the buildings now, which have been demolished by CERA, could be repaired for 20 to 30 per cent of the cost of a new building. So it's the haste and the extent of CERA's building demolition strategy which is impeding the city's recovery. CERA is creating a stark and bleak wasteland with huge vacant lots which may remain that way for decades, particularly if the former owners of the buildings that have been demolished take their insurance payouts and go elsewhere, as the owners of the big Crown Plaza Hotel are understood to be doing. Christchurch is known internationally for its stone Gothic revival buildings. They include the Arts Centre, the Christchurch Cathedral, the Canterbury Museum, the Provincial Council Chambers and numerous churches. They are a key part of the city's architectural heritage. They are objects of beauty, of considerable artisanship and they have a key commercial value in attracting visitors to the city and providing the backdrop to a vital cultural life. Yet Sarah's enthusiasm for demolition, its failure to seek proper advice from engineers who are experienced in retrofitting and rebuilding and strengthening heritage buildings, means that the wizard is now conducting regular prayings to try and save that symbol of Christchurch, the Christchurch Cathedral. And as the listener reported, Last uh, November, and I quote, we have owners desperate for us to say the building has less than 33% of new code strength and is therefore classed as a dangerous building. Then they go along to Sarah and have an exchange of letters. The owners hand over the letter from the engineer saying it's under 33% and Sarah hands them a letter saying, tell us how you're going to knock it down within 10 days. And because of that, when owners have the option of repairing their damaged buildings or getting an insurance payout, there's a very powerful incentive to go for the cash. With the cathedral, not enough has been done to investigate ways of repairing and strengthening the building, and Sarah is encouraging with its haste to demolish, to meet that April deadline, a bleak and stark wasteland within the city. We need Sarah's extensive powers to be curtailed. We need the City Council to go back to making decisions on the buildings which should be demolished using a public process where there's an opportunity for public submissions. The Sarah Act has a lifespan of five years 
and it includes a commitment that it will be reviewed annually. The previous member has indicated that the government is going to make some announcement tomorrow. That one-year anniversary is approaching, and Sarah's powers need to be so substantially curtailed. Right. If, if, the, um, if the member keeps talking after I rung the bell, that constitutes another call. So I, I didn't dock you one, and I didn't dock the previous uh, Labor member as well. But just be mindful, if you continue talking and I call you again, that constitutes another call. It means later on you won't have that call if you want to speak on something else. So just remind all members of that. Uh, the question is, the report of the Finance and Expenditure Committee on the 2010-11 Financial Review of the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority be noted. Those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Members, I understand the next Financial Review members wish to debate is the Financial Review of the Ministry of Transport. Will members please turn to the Transport and Industrial Relations Committee's report?